We are getting close. The men's 100 meters. And Hannah, you're going to tell us about the man who may be the best sprinter this country's ever had. I think so, Larry. You know, there have been others, Bob Hayes, men like him that have dominated the era. But Carl Lewis is the fastest man this country has ever produced, the fastest man this world has ever produced. And thus, he is probably the best known track and field athlete in the world. It's not often that we see the private side of an athlete of the stature of Carl Lewis, and we certainly didn't see his private side for many, many years. But in telling us here of his journey to the Goodwill Games, Carl Lewis did provide us with a private portrait, one that I think will move you, as he tells us of a man who will always be close to his heart. In my journey to the Goodwill Games, um, I, of course, still feel my father's presence. He uh, inspires us, all of us, every, every day, I would say, because there's always a time when I think about him. He was very, very stern. We were raised very independently um, to do what we thought was right, but when we did what we either thought was wrong or what was wrong, we, we were very sternly corrected. I think there's one way I'm like him. I, I don't really like to hear a lot of bull, to be honest. I mean, I'm a, I'm a very straightforward type of person. I believe that um, you try to be as honest as you possibly can. You try to help people because he was a, a person who helped a lot of people. One thing about him, he was a very good coach. He coached different sports. And uh, he was very successful because he was able to deal with people a lot. And, and I, I just hope that I had that skill because he was a tremendous person in, in terms of dealing with people. My father uh, was, had a very strong will and a very strong attitude, and, and of course he knew that, that, that cancer was there and what, what was happening. But he was able to continue to, to transcend a very positive attitude in order for us to continue to move on. It's kind of interesting that we're back here because the last international meet competition he went to was the Goodwill Games four years ago. I was looking at some video before I left um, for New Jersey for the funeral, and I saw the 100 meter final at the 84 Olympic Games. And it showed me, of course, crossing the finish line, and it showed my parents in the stands cheering and, and happy and, and a very uh, upbeat situation. And I, and I saw this joy on my father's face. And basically, when I, I saw that, I just got, I had this feeling of wanting to give him something back that would be, that would be everlasting. I just decided to take the, the gold medal from the Olympic Games. And it was, it was interesting because I did put it in his hand, and his hand was cupped almost to take it at the time. And, and um, the last thing I remember is, is, is of course, seeing the medal. And, and he had his little um, uh, official's pen because he was an official. He always enjoyed that. And uh, he, had a, he had a watch we'd given him before. You know, it was, just, it was really a peaceful time. Every race that I run uh, is, is kind of an inspirational race because I can't talk to him anymore, but I can communicate with him through my competition, through my actions. And uh, I just want to be the best that I can be for that reason. A very moving piece. Brilliantly done, I think. The big race. Maybe the race of the summer in track and field. There's the gentleman's going to be involved in it. Carl Lewis in nine minutes. Don't go away. We're going to go out to Husky Stadium. And this is gonna be something else. Here's Bob Neal, Robert. Larry, this is the most anticipated race of the Goodwill Games. The most anticipated race from my point of view this year. It is Carl Lewis and Leroy Burrell. Now there are some other fine competitors in here, but Craig Masbach, everybody talking about Carl Lewis, Leroy Burrell. We were at a news conference the other day. They're good friends. They connect to Houston. They connect at the Santa Monica Track Club. Carl Lewis holds the world record at 992. Of course, the Ben Johnson victory was discredited because of the drug abuse, and Carl Lewis holds that record at 992. And Leroy Burrell has times of 994 and 996, and it is the match race of the year. Well, they're doing the wave here in the stadium. If this was a boxing match, it would be on pay-per-view. But the thing about it is, all year long, these guys have been looking forward to it. Even though they train together, they have the same coaches in Tom Telez and Mike Takaha. As we look at the back of Leroy Burrell, and what a strong man he is. They want to run this race. They want to see who is the best this year right now. 
Roy Burrell came from the Philadelphia area, went to the University of Houston because Carl Lewis was there. And in 1989, Leroy Burrell at the Athletic Congress meet sets his personal list. And it was run on his home track in Houston. Carl Lewis was in the stands watching. He had a political gripe with the Athletics Congress, but this was when Leroy, Leroy Burrell really had his coming out party. A 9.94 for Leroy Burrell. That is his best ever. Carl Lewis world record is at 9.92. Now, when you look at the tail of the tape, they are different sizes. Lewis 6.2. Burrell only 5.10. They match up well. Lewis has won. What's it I'd like? I'd say to it run did more than Lewis? anything. It enhances our races because uh, we know we both know what, what we're going to do, and we both know that that uh, we're we're the two best people out there. And, and, uh, it, it, and, and due to the fact that we're friends, uh, some of the anxiety that, anxiety that an, a person in my position may feel isn't there. So, so I think I'm capable of running the best of my ability, even, with, even against Carl. You know, you expect, Craig, that Leroy Burrell and Carl Lewis would be adversarial, but they are the best of friends. Will that affect the competition here? Burrell calls Carl a friend, but he gets a little tired of being compared to Carl Lewis. He says he wants to establish himself as an individual. Carl has sort of shielded Leroy up to this point. Now it's head-to-head, -head, mano a mano. This 25,000 crowd is excited. Many are on their feet as they're about ready to meet these competitors. It's not just Lewis and Burrell. Mark Witherspoon of Santa Monica Track Club, also a strong runner from Cuba. Andre Simone is here, a good runner named Golkin from the Soviet Union. And on let's the meet the competitors for the, the men's 100, 100 meters. meters. In lane one, number 133, the runner-up in the Soviet National Championship this year, Pavel Galkin. In lane two, number 34, 1989 World Indoor 60-meter champion from Cuba, Andres Simon. In lane three, number 297, the 1987 USA national champion and 1990 runner-up, Mark Witherspoon. In lane four, number 257, a five-time United States 100-meter champion, the owner of six Olympic gold medals, including two at 100 meters, the world record holder, 992 for 100 meters. This is Carl Lewis. In lane five, number 213, the 1989 U.S. national champion, the fastest 100 meter in the world last year, and thus far the fastest 100 meter in the world this year, Leroy Burrell. In lane six, number 324, the world junior champion and World University Games gold medalist, Andre Kaysen. In lane seven, number 267, 1989 national collegiate 200 meter champion, 1988 Olympic finalist, Dennis Mitchell. Number 84, the Jamaican national record holder, two-time former NCAA champion at TCU, the 1987 World Championship bronze medalist, Raymond Stewart. Stewart, by the way, number one in the world last year, been off his form a little this year. Late arrival last night, officials thought he had pulled out of the race. Of course, he's here, he's in lane eight. It's lane four, Carl Lewis, lane five, Leroy Burrell. Carl's been very distracted. He's been promoting his book, but he's a great, Competitor. A lot of people think, hey, he's a guy with a lot of natural talent. He's not a great competitor. He can win easily. Every time he's been up against the wall, he's always responded. A world record in the indoor long jump when he was behind Larry Myricks was one of those cases. The weather favors Carl also. It's cool. Leroy Burrell has that big muscle mass. It's harder for him to get going with weather like this. Last point, I think, is if these two guys are looking at each other too much, Mark Witherspoon could sneak away with the victory. Lane four, Carl Lewis. Lane five, 
Leroy Burrell. 213 is Burrell, 257 Carl Lewis. Burrell has never beaten Lewis. It's a good start. In the middle, in the blue. Lewis and Burrell. Keeson got out. So did Simone. It is Burrell and Lewis. It looks like Burrell. Leroy Burrell has defeated Carl Lewis in the men's 100 meters, 10.07 unofficially. An explosive start for Burrell. Andre Simone of Cuba was an early leader. Burrell did not decelerate. He held on and held off Carl Lewis for the victory. The biggest challenge for Leroy Burrell was to not forget the lessons of his coach, Tom T his coaches, Tom Telez and Mike Takaha. They say you want to have a smooth acceleration to your top speed. Carl Lewis in the middle had one of his best starts of the year, but it wasn't enough because once he got into his good running motion, Burrell was right, right alongside. Burrell is more race fit than Carl is, and he took advantage of that towards the end of the race. He was the one with the big acceleration at the finish, and that was enough for the victory. Leroy Burrell, 23 years old. Carl Lewis turned 29 just earlier this month. Straight on, in the blue, Lewis and Burrell. Look at Carl Lewis, uncharacteristically, over on the side of his lane. Usually he's the one that's straight down the middle with everything under control. He lost a little bit at the start, and I wonder if he got a little greedy at the start. He tried to get away with something, perhaps. Leroy Burrell was a little more controlled this time. Sometimes people say that he lets his brute strength get him out of his good running motion. And while he's trying to take other people out of their comfort zones, he's forgetting his race plan. This time he stuck to his race plan. Look how relaxed he is on the left. His cheeks are jiggling. That's the sign of good sprinting. You relax and let the speed come out. Leroy Burrell, Carl Lewis, and Mark Witherspoon, one, two, three, a sweep for the Houston training partners and a sweep for the Santa Monica Track Club and Leroy Burrell with his first victory ever over Carl Lewis. Larry King, it's exciting out here at Husky Stadium. The most exciting 10.7 seconds you're going to see. You are so right. And Carol Lewis, Carl's sister, was here to watch it all. Your reaction? Well, I thought it was a great race. I think one thing we always say at Santa Monica Track Club is that as long as one of us wins, it's good. I think Carl didn't run as good a race as he could have. But running against Leroy Burrell the last two years, he's been the number one sprinter in the world. Not a slouch to lose against. No disgrace today. <laughs> Definitely no disgrace. I think they've got a long summer to go, and I think they'll both run some fast times. Thanks, Carol. Carl Lewis, Burrell wins it. We'll be back with more on Larry King with Hannah Storm and Nick Charles in Seattle. Stay right there. Carl Lewis in a time of 10.05. Carl Lewis at 10.08. Mark Witherspoon was third at 10.17. And Craig Masbach, it was much what we expected in terms of the finish. Burrell really holding his acceleration. What a great race. Burrell destroyed his knee long jumping in 1986. They said he would never run again. One reason he's been able to come back is because Carl Lewis has helped to coach him coached him perhaps all the way to this victory over him let's play tribute to Carl I don't think this is a changing of the guard yet Carl is still going to be around as soon as he pays more attention to racing instead of writing he's going to be ready to run again and Carl Lewis and Leroy Burrell are with Dave Sims right now all right thank you guys uh, Leroy Burrell you've never beaten your friend and teammate Carl Lewis until now tell us about it well uh, I feel as though uh, I, I got out and I ran my own race and I think that was the key to the victory. I didn't exactly start well, and uh, I just put it on at the end like I normally do, and it went well. I th really thought Carl was right there, and I, I'm very happy that I was out leaning. I was able to out lean him. Carl, your thoughts? Well, Leroy definitely ran a, a better race than I did today. He was he was sharper, and he did what he had to do, and and um, he's a great athlete, and the only thing I can say is that I'm still at it. We'll be back, and I think hope, hopefully that gives America a one-two punch for a long time. All right, guys, All right. can I throw one in? Leroy, this is sure Larry enough, King. Larry. I'm at the IBC uh, Center. Leroy, in a sprint race, do you know that you're going to win it? Was there a moment there where you knew you would not be top? Well, I was. I felt from the start that I wasn't that I was going to be in it. Uh, I didn't get a, my characteristic start, but I was very happy with with the end. You know, I I've always feel that I'm always in a race no matter where I am, and I'm very happy with the results. Right before you started, did you have thoughts of the fact that you'd never beaten Carl? Well. Uh, I wouldn't say, I'm sorry, I didn't really understand you, but I think it was excited. Uh, yes, I'm very excited. Uh, I, I'm excited more of the fact that I was able to adjust to all of the pressure 
and run my own race. That's what I'm really excited about. Paul, I, I know you part of your stop on your book tour was our show. <laughs> Do you think the book tour has affected you? Well, it doesn't matter, uh, Larry. When you accept responsibility, you accept the whole package together. Um, regardless of what I did today, tomorrow, or any other time, Leroy ran a tremendous race, and he deserves a win today. And, and uh, the only thing I can definitely say, only thing I can say is that uh, I'm going to keep at it and keep running, and I feel that I have better races left to me this summer, and we should expect some great times. Thanks a lot, both of you. Thanks, Dave.